Uh, my name is Harriet Harvey Horn. I live here in Los Gatos and uh, I'm a climate reality leader. I was trained in 2018 by Mr. Gore and all the scientific experts on how to engage people on the climate. Um, and I've been involved then since uh, with the Santa Clara County chapter as well as the Bay Area chapter. And I've been involved as a mentor uh, for the trainings and it's some of the most rewarding work I've ever done. So um, that's a little bit about me. And um, the Santa Clara County chapter, well, the Climate Reality Project was founded in 2006 by Mr. Gore to start to create a global network of um, people mobilized to be able to engage audiences and even just people in regular conversations about the climate and what's going on and what they can do. Uh, and so about 2014, they decided to expand what they do and create local chapters uh, where uh, advocates, people coming off of the climate reality trainings would have other leaders they could connect with. Um, and then also with local chapters, they could reach out to the greater community to join the chapter, even if people had not been able to go to the training, um, in order to give those people the ability to connect with other climate advocates and also to take action at the local level um, on things that will uh, make a difference in the climate. Great. Um, so how long has the chapter been running? Um, the Santa Clara County chapter was started in 2018 uh, by climate reality leader and tireless champion really for many causes, um, Karen Nelson. And uh, so Karen decided there is a pretty large uh, San Francisco Bay Area chapter that really encompasses the entire Bay Area, but it, it really is centered around the major metropolitan areas of San Francisco and Oakland. And so uh, she really felt like that there was room in the world for us to have another chapter down here in Silicon Valley. There's so much going on with innovation and whatnot, and the, um, and the needs are a little different in a more suburban community. So she created it. We have about 200 members now and growing. Lots of people coming on board, very engaged in what's going on with uh, the climate impacts that are actually being seen uh, nowadays. So, Can you tell us a little bit about the different initiatives that the chapter is involved with and kind of your guys' ultimate goal? Well, sure. You know, I'll start with that ultimate goal, right, is um, really just to provide an opportunity at the local level to engage with our with the greater climate reality organization and its mission of this grassroots mobilization, creating more voices, more messengers for the climate, um, but also to you know provide opportunities for people to connect um, and to advocate for issues that are you know more localized in our area. Uh, and so the the specific areas that the chapter has been working on are a community choice energy. Uh, there are two organizations in the South Bay, San Jose Clean Energy and Silicon Valley Clean Energy, that give homeowners the opportunity to opt into 100% renewable energy coming into their homes, but just a lot of people don't know about it. So the chapter's been very involved in helping those organizations get the word out about the simple process for just uh, opting in to 100% renewable energy at home and really reducing your carbon footprint uh, significantly that way. Um, also, we have an effort uh, to uh, increase public awareness of what's going on in the Arctic. We call that our Arctic Restoration Program. Uh, it is like, just like I say, a public education um, mission. And to not only inform people about what is happening, the, the terrible crisis with the, the polar melts, but also to uh, make people aware that there are some really promising science developing on restoring Arctic ice and preventing some of the permafrost melt and the methane release that's happening. So, um, but those things need funding, they need government support. So we have this uh, awareness campaign around the Arctic. We also have a group that works on advocating for legislation and policy at not only the local level, but also the California the state effort, state level. Uh, and basically they just communicate opportunities for people to advocate um, by letting you know, call your representative about this bill, et cetera. Uh, and we communicate that um, by our email communications for people that have joined the chapter. We have a fair number of people that have joined the chapter just to receive those kind of communications. So, um, and we also have uh, social media uh, presences on Facebook 
and Instagram. So if anybody's interested in following us there, just uh, search for Climate Reality Santa Clara County. Those will come up. So legislation and policy is one thing that we communicate via those channels. We also communicate opportunities to be informed, to advocate whenever we can uh, join in some sort of a march and that kind of thing. All those things get communicated through our uh, communications channels. Uh, we also have a speakers bureau that supports our trained climate rally leaders, provides opportunity for the public to be educated on the climate crisis and what they can do about it. Um, the speakers bureau also supports our climate reality leaders with a lot of resources and training and that kind of thing. So those are some major chapter efforts. We always welcome if somebody wants to come on board and they are just really purposeful about something they feel very strongly about and want to lead that, you know, our chapter is always open to looking for those opportunities and those kind of people ready to step into a leadership role. So that's in a nutshell what the, the chapter is involved with. Are there any other general initiatives, maybe local like Los Gatos or nearby that you can share with us? Yeah, well, you know, I would say that, um, you know, the town has been involved in some initiatives that um, can really help people reduce their carbon footprint by bicycling more, uh, walking more. We have a very walkable town, actually. Um, they've created these safe bike lanes. Um, there are a number of traffic calming measures that they're working on that sometimes community members are a little not happy with, but it really actually is a very good thing. When you, when you calm traffic and people drive slower, they burn less fuel and perhaps might choose to go ahead and walk or ride their bike, which is healthier anyway. So I would say some of those kind of um, ways of getting around and uh, supporting the town and, and the government in trying to do those, um, do that to, to get fewer cars on the road and the cars that are on the road to be safer and in emitting less carbon into the atmosphere. Uh, the planning commission right now is working on a strategic plan and people really need to let them know that they want them to be considering climate as a, a priority. Um, you know, we certainly felt some impacts from the recent wildfires. We need to worry about those resiliency uh, measures, but we also need to really be, as a town, very aware of things we can do to draw down um, what's happening with climate disruption and supporting things like building electrification uh, so that those buildings can be fueled by renewable energy, et cetera. So um, I would say that strategic plan and let them know that you want the town government to put climate first, because it really is starting to hit us at home, very obviously. What are some first actions you would say that people can take if they really want to get involved, but they don't know quite where to start? Yeah, well, um, you know, as, as we like to say in climate reality, um, there are three big things you can do. Use your vote, use your choices, and use your voice. So I'll talk quickly about each of those three. Uh, use your vote. I mean, this could not be a more pivotal time for climate action in our country over the next however many weeks it is until the November election. So vote Earth. And perhaps to the extent that you're uh, able to and have the time and the energy, um, you can uh, jump onto some of these really amazing get out the vote efforts, nonpartisan efforts like Rock the Vote targeted at getting young people out to vote and um, the Environmental Voter Project, which is reaching out to something like 10 million environmental voters that just sat out the 2016 election and just trying to get these people that we know will be more inclined to, to vote in the, the right way for the climate uh, to the polls. So then next, use your choices, those everyday choices. Opt up to 100% renewable, like I mentioned, through Silicon Valley Clean Energy here in Los Gatos or uh, San Jose Clean Energy if you live in San Jose. Try to walk and bike more when it's time to get a new car or maybe before you're ready for a new car, get an electric vehicle. You can buy a used one for not all that much money. Um, and uh, follow climate organizations like the Climate Reality Project, those Sierra Project, Sierra Club, uh, 350.org. Uh, Citizens Climate Lobby is very active in our area, Mothers Out Front, um, Silicon Valley Youth Climate Action, Elders Climate Action, all those are, are NGOs that have very active uh, chapters and organizations here in the South Bay. And if you follow them, you'll get their email communications and between those, those organizations, you will be really informed about 
some options, you know, and um, advocacy opportunities. So um, do that. Finally, use your voice. It is the number one thing you can do to advocate for the climate and make a difference. Engage people, tell them about the things you're doing. It doesn't have to be scaring people to death about the horrible things happening in the Arctic. It is scary, but give people something positive. Say, you know, I'm, I, I'm gonna get an EV or I know somebody that got solar panels or, you know, our family just went to 100% uh, renewable using Silicon Valley clean energy. We got a heat pump water heater. Any kind of action, tell people about it because a lot of times people just don't know. They might be nervous about some sort of change. And if they know somebody that's done it, they'll be more likely to take those, um, make those changes themselves. So use your voice, reach out there, advocate in every opportunity you can with your representatives, your town council, the leaders at school, at church, at where you work. Uh, your voice is a very, very powerful thing. Uh, and certainly something that's very important to bring to bear nowadays with the climate crisis.